Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Rexfer here, and welcome back to another Game tutorial, and today what we're going to be doing is going over some enemy spawning, and before I actually get into the tutorial here, one thing I want to note, or actually two things I guess, the first thing being that yes, I'm in Game Maker Studio this time around, and no, that does not mean that you have to use Game Maker Studio for this to work, I'm just in Game Maker Studio because the example that I made, basically that you guys are seeing right now, was created in Game Maker Studio because I had to work on another computer and stuff and stuff and stuff. Hence, we're finally working in a different engine because a million of you actually have <laughs> kind of noted that I've used Game Maker 8 for the longest time and why don't I switch? So, finally, for this one time, I'm using Game Maker Studio. And uh, the second thing is, it's 4th of July, so for any of you watching, I guess, right now, happy 4th of July. And uh, there might be some big booms going on in the background. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear them or not, but uh, it's like midday, so people are kind of starting to just light off some big fireworks, so. My apologies for those background noises, but anyway, let's go ahead and get right into the tutorial here by starting off this engine and seeing what all we're looking at. Once it freaking loads, there we go. So let me go ahead and click on this guy here. Basically, what we have going on here is, because this is an enemy spawning thing, get back there, uh, this is our little enemy here, and you'll notice each time I click on him, boop, uh, it takes a couple seconds, and then he just, or not even a couple seconds, a couple, like, milliseconds, then he just respawns right back where he was in the original place, and he keeps going. Good. Bye. And uh, so I basically just made it every single time I click on him, that's pretty much what happens. And this is what we're going to be learning today. And I decided to go with the cute little Goomba sprite here, just instead of a generic looking enemy. So, I don't know, just kind of adds a, a cool little touch, a little bit, touch of detail to the tutorial. But uh, let's go ahead and exit this and get back into Game Maker and see how this all works. So, without further ado, um, the first thing I want to go over is the sprites. Now, you'll notice here I have two separate sprites. I know I kind of over-detailed this tutorial a bit more than I probably should have, but uh, you only need um, just one sprite. I mean, it doesn't really matter whether you have two... Uh, or, you know, whatever, with multiple sub-images. These are just for just detail purposes of the tutorial. They're not needed. And uh, we're going to go down here into the enemy object first. Um, now, this is the enemy that's going to obviously be spawning here, and a lot of this stuff is mainly just, again, for the detail, um, such as a lot of the stuff you see here go... There we go. Um, so all of this is not needed. It's basically just setting up the sprite so he, you know, walks correctly and stuff. So again, just detail. Um, and in the step event here, I believe, yep, this is just detail as well. This window, uh, Game Maker Studio is such a pain. Uh, but anyway, a lot of this stuff here, uh, this X minus equals 2, that's just so he goes to the left, not needed. Uh, but the left pressed actually is needed. So what we're going to do here, oh my gosh. Ah, uh, Game Maker Studio can drive me nuts. That's why, definitely for tutorials, I like to stick with other things besides GM Studio, because this program just has a lot of minor things that get on my nerves. So, anyway, though, what we're going to do here is, in this left press event, we have an instance destroy and an obj spawn dot dead equals true. Now, you might be curious, uh, why do we have the little dot there? And basically how this works, if you never got into um, kind of cross-referencing uh, variables from different objects, we basically have this little dot here to say that for this object, obj spawn, um, this little dot signifies that whatever's across it on the other side of it is going to be a variable or something that pertains to this object. So since it says dot dead, that means that this obj spawn here has a variable named dead. And we'll get into that in just a minute here. But all we need to know for now is when we uh, left, uh, left click, I keep saying press, I guess either one would be correct, but when we left click on our enemy object here, it's going to first destroy the object and then set uh, the dead variable that we have set up in obj spawn to true. And this left press can be replaced with whatever you want to have to basically make the enemy die. So say you want him to jump on him, uh, you would just change this to whatever the heck you want to have. Um, so that kills the enemy. And then just keep the code. <sighs> keep the code as the same code that you see here. All right. So now finally got uh, time to go into the spawn object here. So what we have is, let's see. Uh, okay. I swear, I'm never using Game Maker Studio for tutorial purposes again. So what we have here, starting off with the create event, is there is our variable. There's our dead variable. And you can rename this whatever the heck you want to rename it. I just named it dead because it seemed to fit. So our dead variable is going to start off equaling false. And uh, basically to spawn our enemy, we're going to have instance underscore create x, y. So that basically means on the object itself, wherever we place the spawn object, that's where our enemy is going to spawn out of. Um, and then it's going to create our obj underscore enemy object. So that's all fine and dandy. Now we're going to go ahead head of the step event here instead of going to the alarm event because the step or the step event goes into the alarm event. So 
here we are kind of testing the variable. So if dead equals true, so basically if our enemy is dead, if, he, if we've killed him, uh, that's going to initiate our dead variable to true. So if dead equals true, if our enemy's dead, uh, then alarm zero is going to equal 15, and dead is going to equal false. Now I believe um, this is 15 number of steps. And so the alarm zero event basically triggers, uh, let's go inside here. Uh, the alarm zero event basically triggers uh, another instance create of our enemy object. So basically, after everything is done, um, the alarm zero event is going to take place and just create another enemy, and everything is going to kind of recycle again. But over here, in the step event, uh, this little 15 here kind of signifies how long it will take until the alarm zero event triggers and spawns another object. And I believe uh, these are going by steps, and I believe 13 or excuse me, 30 steps is a second. And so if you wanted to wait like two seconds, you could just type like 60, and then of course dead equals false, it resets everything. And so see here, we went ahead and typed out 60. Let's go and run the game and see what happens. So I believe it should take about two seconds. So we click one, two. Okay, well that was kind of fast. Uh, let's go and click on them again. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. There we go. So yeah, it's about two seconds. And so um, you can go ahead and change this right here uh, to whatever the heck you want, and it will maximize the time that it takes for the enemy to respawn again. So there we go, guys. That is how to make um, enemy spawns and stuff like that. Sorry, I'm a bit tired today. Um, but yeah, that's basically how to do enemy spawns. I know I said I would use the previous engine that I used for like random spawn generation stuff, but I ended up having to be on a different computer and making this. So basically, that's how all this happened. And that's how I'm using Game Maker Studio, as I earlier explained. And I'll never be using it again for tutorial purposes, at least. And uh, so yeah. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully it helps you. Feel free to comment, rate, maybe even subscribe to my channel for upcoming updates on future videos and the like. And until next time, till next video, this has been Rex Furry, and as always, I'll see you all then.